Welcome to Scotch for Dummies. Tonight, we're going to be discussing Dewar's 15, the Monarch. We are also having an in-depth discussion of cask maturation, how wood affects the end product of whiskey. We're very happy to have you. Let's get started tonight. Scott Fredonkis here. What's going Piano on? There. How are we doing? <laughs> Happy Thursday, Happy everybody. Thursday, everybody. How is everybody? Oh, oh, all right. Man. What a week so far. It has been a long. Is it Friday yet? God. Almost. One nope. more. One more day. One more day. One more day. Right. That's it. why Thursday's here for you. Yep. Get you through. One more day. It looks like we're doing research here on the podcast. It is. Tonight. Look at this. We have 16 individual glasses, four little bottles. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday, Thursday. Thursday guys. A hearty welcome to everybody that's on the show tonight. Who's, what are you tasting? A? B? I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Delta. Mm-mm. Mm. I poured a Balvini just to not get in the way of this. So just to let everybody know what's going on, what we've done here. It's too sweet. Um, on our patron pre-show, we poured out for these four samples, A, B, C, D, that were provided to us by Justin. We'll bring him on the show here in a few seconds. Um, and we went through an initial nosing, yep. tasting, added some water, ranking. We talked through it. We've all got notes. Um, but we wanted to get through that part so that we could – go through his challenge. Uh, we have no idea where we're going with this. I will give you a brief introduction as to what this is about. It's about uh, new and in innovative ways to create fantastic whiskey. Some old distilleries have been doing the same process for so long. Can innovation really still take place at those? So keeping that in mind when we went through these initially, we're already starting to think what's going on in this glass. What, why does this one stand out and what kind of innovative yep. things could be done with this? So um, we've gotten through the initial stuff. We've gotten through the notes and we've got our notes. We've actually got our rankings. I don't know if we yep. want to share those just yet. Justin knows our rankings from the initial pass. I'm sure they're going to change. They may or they may not change. I shouldn't say that I'm sure. I don't know. But, um, we, but we got notes down. We do have let's, notes. let's bring Justin in and let him kind of talk through what he wants to, how he wants yeah. to discuss yeah. the whiskey. I like it. All right. So, Justin, you, you heard our intro. We've tasted A through D. <laughs> what what do you want to preface in addition to what you put in the thing or, or, if not, or nothing? What do you want to talk to us about? Not a whole lot. Um, they're all... <laughs> exciting and um, tasty in their own way, although B is kind of a, an acquired taste, as you guys know. <laughs> okay. So uh, for, for everyone watching at home, tell us what, tell them what you are willing to tell us. You are not willing to go on record about and give us much information about them. You did say they were all malts yep. and they are all whiskeys. Yes. Um, and they've not been altered from their bottle. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, can, are you wanting to say natural color, natural filter, or anything like that, or? Uh, I think all of them, except mm, maybe one of them, is all natural color and no natural filter. Okay. 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 I'm so, not going to tell you which one I'm not sure about. Nope, that's fine. And that's fair. All right, fair enough. So we've got to get into these envelopes and find out where we this do. challenge leads us. So let's go through our ranking real quick for everybody, just so that everybody else can hear what sure. we got so far. Sure. So let's start with normal round. Mark, will you go. Okay, ahead. so A through D right here. My rankings are D is first. I like it the best. C is second. A would be third. And B is fourth. So that's Delta, Charlie, Alpha, Bravo. Andrew. So my my favorite before the show was one <laughs> was A and then A and then D and then C and then B. Now as the show started, I tasted A again. I'm like, yeah, that should be number one. I don't know where I'd put it, but I'm gonna stick with A is one, D is two, C is three, and B is four. Keep notes at home. That's the oddball of the three. Yep. Yeah. We're pretty similar. Andrew yep. was out in left field. 
Well, I'm gonna go through mine and a little bit of flavor too. Okay, a couple here are doozy. So my favorite was Delta, which I said was more kind of a little bourbon soda water and kind of like uh, um, mm -hmm. very, very syrupy, I think is what I said. Oh, I said sriracha sauce too in the nose. Uh, my number two was Alpha, uh, soapy white chocolate. Uh, my my number three was um, Charlie, which I said was very light in the nose, leathery a little bit maybe. And then my four was Bravo. So I you and I only flipped uh, one or two. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna draw that out. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're not you're not quite left field. You're no. shortstop. Hey, shortstop. shortstop. That's a pretty important player in the field. That's so. the best, the most important player. <laughs> uh, I like this. short. All right. <laughs> but, uh, All right. So my ranking was exactly the same as Mark's. Uh, I had a D or what I like to call number four uh, <laughs> as number one. Don't be confused with that. Um, that one I was very rich and flavorful. I got. Cinnamon, red hots, oak, uh, turbo sugar. Did you get any turbo sugar on there? So, no, but I did get syrupy and I got a cinnamon finish. So, there you go. Um, my second choice was C. Um, that one was a little more fruity yes. and a little bit of spice on the end. Not overpowering, but I, I really liked that one quite a bit. I agree. Uh, a was number three, and that was kind of neck and neck, honestly, with C. Like, it was really kind sure. of a toss up. Um, and that one had a little bit of licorice, um, some spice, pop rocks. Uh, I, I enjoyed that one. And then B was my final one. Although after putting water on it, like initially it had a weird nose. Now it has like a rye kind of nose to it. And I, it's actually pretty enjoyable, but it's just kind of the outlier of the three. So, or mm. the four. So, so, yeah, and, and we didn't talk through, do we want to go through flavor? Yeah, we didn't talk through them you know, that could much. This, could this be something that we haven't had, like, you know, from different country? You know what? Here? So I don't possibly. know if Justin's willing to, to give us any more. Well, well we, got, we got more comment. More well, yeah. no, but Maybe Justin, uh, do you know if we've had any or all of these or some of them? Or are you we willing to? We've had at least two of them. Okay. Okay. So in, in, in the grand scheme of things with what was laid down in the beginning, innovation, and I, I, I nose through these and I try to think about what what was used, what innovation was used, what makes this difference stand out about. To me, Fair question, yeah. B is the one that really probably stands out as the most innovative. Because I mean, yes. it's, well, it's I, agree. Three here. Here. I, I totally three. agree. Totally agree. Yeah. So, I mean, if I'm if I'm trying to guess on the innovation, that one stands out in my mind. But bef before we go any further in, into envelope two, which is what we're getting ready to open, let's say hey to a few people yeah. online. Yeah. I, I want to go down the list here. There's so many people on, oh, and I, I got to say hi to everybody. So, <laughs> hey, Tom, I saw you a few seconds ago in the pre-show. We gave the keys to you. Jimmy T., Malt Minion, Alejandro was in the pre-show. There's Hoagie from Germany. What's Hoagie. going on, my friend? Nice to see you. Buddy. Um, Bob H. Bob H. was at the beach today. How was, was that, buddy? Yep. Uh, Bob Johnson, George Kaplan was on the pre-show. Aaron John Hartman. Kranz. You get John? John Kranz? I didn't. Uh, JG. Power. Mark JG's there. Mark Brom. Look at all the Marks. Good people. Good people. Great <laughs> power. <laughs> Not that you're biased. Rich is easy to that, right? <laughs> John Kranz. Yeah. Man, there's a so it's good to see everybody. Uh, Absolutely, well, Mark, we, we did kind of dive right into this because it's, it's a challenge. On. We want to get into Scotch this. On the so, hey, Lou. Hey, Lou. Hey, Lou. Good picture this so let's, week. Let's get on to number two. Um, we got yeah. a big show tonight. Yeah. So, so happy let's, birthday, yeah, we'll go to Envelope number two. I opened it earlier, but didn't look through it. So we're going to decide. to me. All right. Challenge number one. Woohoo! Find the blended malt. Oh. Find the malt aged only in new charred oak. Find the most expensive malt, and find the single malt. So, mm. blended malt, single malt, new charred oak only, and the most expensive. Can I see this again? Yep. Two more time. So we I'm ready. So we got blended. Find the blended, new char, aged only in new char. Most expensive, and then single malt. Find the single malt. So the single malt's not the most expensive. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess. That's, that's an assumption. That's Maybe right. I played a few games of Clue. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is going to be tough, guys. Oh, shoot. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Continue to make fun of me because I do. Oh. Um, so take to note, guys. Justin did say they're all malts. So the blend. Hang on a second. I'm done. <laughs> I do think it's Megan Grass in here. I'm shooting from the hip. I'm going to say, let's see. Most expensive is D. It could be C. That's what's weird about it. I think that might be a trick one. But what's the other one? One was char uh, New Chard. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Yeah. New and then a single malt. Mm -hmm. mm. So what, what's B then? I know. Don't you worry. I'm I know. I, I got. Um, mm. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Right. Hands up. up. Hands up. Time's up. Hands no, 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 no. Where's the Jeopardy timer? Yeah. All right. I think I got my answer. All right. Everybody got? Yep. Something? Yes, I'm good. Are you good? No. Well, oh, you, go ah. you go first. We'll come back. To All right. It. From the hip. So, All right. From the hip. Hold so, on. Hold on. You're going to influence him. Yeah. From the hip. That's fine. That's true. He needs to write his shit down. All right. I'm, I'm, no, no, no. Hang on. That's wrong. That's a C, not a D. Okay. <laughs> Dang. He's got four C's. All right. <laughs> One of them is so, right. So, oh, by the way, if, if you're in Discord, oh. Justin did post uh, the link. Did, can you post that via like is that Google or anything you can do? Yeah. Maybe that can make it so that the people in comments can uh, play along with us. Uh, actually, I'm not on the YouTube stream, so I can't post, can post it. Tom, can you do that? Or maybe somebody else that's in Discord, please uh, post the link in our comments. Be great. Yep. Yeah, thanks. All right. So I will go with uh, the blended malt, I believe, is C. The malt age only in new char oak, I believe, is D. The most expensive, I believe, is A. And the single malt, I believe, is B. I am actually, I was with you the first half. I, I said okay. the same thing. I said, um, the blend was C. You taking notes, Justin? Yeah. Um, I said the blend was C. I said D was a new char. I said uh, B was the most expensive and A was a single. I could go that way too. I, I said the exact same thing you did. All wow. Right. So I'm I'm the guy out in right field. That's a really bad place to be too, because no nobody ever hits me. Nobody ever hits me. So what do you what yeah, do you, you look say. at the clouds? So uh, actually, I'm the same on you guys. I say C is the blend. Um, the new char is what I say is B. It just says find a malt aged new. It's, a, it's not scotch. So it's malt. I'm going to go with B. The most expensive I said was A. And then the single malt I said was D. So really, we switched to Yeah, we, we, we're, not, we're, not we're like far. switching a couple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That. So I said blend C, new char B, expensive A, single malt D. <coughs> so, Sean, you're the same as Drew. What was that? John, you're the same as Drew. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Exactly the same. All right. Oh, so do I need to write them down on here? No, no he's got them. We it. got them. Okay. okay. All right. We're moving on to envelope three. That's the beauty of doing this pre tasting. It goes much the faster. Boom. Faster. The pressure, man. <laughs> All right. So, can you find them? Stranahan's single barrel. <laughs> Quinta Rubana 14. Virginia Distillery, Port Cask Finnis, Virginia Highland Whiskey, and High West Whiskey High Country Single Malt. That's what that that's what B is. Okay, so Stranahan single barrel. Kinta Ruben 14. So okay, but which one is the blended scotch? Um I put it in the de the description there, Andrew. Single malt. Oh, that's the, okay. So the Virginia Distillery is the blended Scotch. Oh, oh. that's tricky. It is. Yep. That's, that's so really tricky. tricky. You just wow. completely messed me up. You son of a gun. Why? Oh, wait a mm -hmm. minute. He so the Virginia down. Distillery Port Cat. Yeah, that's okay. Woo. This is a doozy. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure High West is B. 
What, what are the options again? Strain the hands. That's good. That, that could be A or B or C. <laughs> or D <laughs> or F or Z. I'm pretty sure A is pretty oh. High West is B. C is strain the hand. Which one's strain? I'm going to say C. So I, would, I blame them if you're wrong. So I'm going to go with, yeah. Okay. All right. I got mine. Hang on. Virginia distilled, distilled pork <laughs> cask finished. Virginia Highland whiskey. That's not starting hands. So it's not it's scotch. Highland. I don't understand what that means. What? Explain to me what that is, Justin. No, Virgin, no it's a Virginia whiskey. They, what they did is they took. Oh, some I they, see. They I blended did. some scotch in with Virginia. Okay, so Ford. Glen Rossi's the single malt. Right. Scotch. Yes. Doctor Scotch has it right. <laughs> That's a change. Oh yeah, that is rare. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, I'll hang on. Are you guys ready? No, I'm not. You just chill out. Who's, who's ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on. I thought I had it, but uh, strands. I'm gonna hit A, and I'm like, A is definitely not high west. So, okay, I'm, um, I'm ready. Um, A, what's C? Just so you know, I had all my answers, and then I went back and completely changed them. So, I probably got wrong. Okay, that I think that one's right. Yeah. Oh shit, you're right. <laughs> Good mm -hmm. Guys, I am. I, I I'm just. What's funny is you can see us backpedaling because we had something we thought we were pretty sound on, and then we go back and we hear some of these things. We're like, okay, there's no way my other answer is right now because <laughs> there's no way that the blend okay. is a blend is a blend. Okay. Wow. Damn. All right. Um, Okay, so um, Duke, Drew, you, you, you're man. Look at all the switcheroo yeah, going I got on that. here. So that, I think that's right. Right. Alex so, Trebek does not allow that kind of crap. That's why we don't play. That's why we don't play his <laughs> game. So took my ball and went home. I got all right, too, so. you want me to go? Done. Go for I'm it. Out. Go for it. I, I can start. Hands all up. right, here we go. Are we ready for the wrong answers? Yep. <laughs> Straight hand, single barrel. I have D. Bingo. Uh, the Quinta Rubin, I had C. The Virginia Port Cask Finished Virginia Highland Whiskey, I had A. And High West Whiskey High Country American Single Malt, I had B. I'm exactly the same. Wow, that's two. You so I switched, I switched one. I had Quinta A, Stranahan D, High West C, Virginia B. So I switched one. Flipped you, a, you switched the a high and west C. and the Virginia. And wait, wait, so, so go go through that so so just you put it in. So I said Quinta Rubin was Alpha, Stranahan's was Delta, High West was Charlie, and the Virginia Port was Bravo. All right, so I, I switched with you and you. So I've got um Strand is D, Stranahan's is D, so that's what we all have. We all said Stranahan's was D. Glenn Moe is C. I agree with you on that. I have the Virginia's B. And I have oh. the high west is it? No, I, I, you switch those. Two. I don't. Yeah, those are the two I switch. Okay. And then, so Justin, do you have everybody? Uh, say yours again one more time, Andrew. Mine, I had Stranahan as D. Yep. I had Glenn Moe as C. I had Virginia as B, and had high west is A. Okay. 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 All right, last. Open it up. What are we gonna find out? Envelope four. Full reveal with Justin's notes oh. for fun. A even better is the Virginia Distilled okay. Port Cask hey. Finished Virginia nice, Highland right. Whiskey, forty-six percent ABV. I was I right about 46. that. Look, right there. I was right about that. This is Quinta Rubin just turned up to eleven. <laughs> yeah, I actually had to switch them back. <laughs> no, I, I did the exact same thing. I switched them back. Yep. So you so, switch, ver uh, so the Virginia and the High West. Yeah. You flip. Yeah, I literally had A and C switched. So I mean, uh, uh, close. A and B. They were close. Good. Yes. B is the High West, right? B is High West High Country American Single Malt. I had A and B switched. You guys hit them all. What's the ABV? Forty-four. Oh, I put forty. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> C is the Glenmo, which I switched with the A. That is forty-six. And then obviously we all got the strand of hands. What was at 43 for the 14 ABV? What? No, oh, I didn't. Six. Okay. Sorry, so, I didn't put the ABV on the strand of hands. It's uh, 
57.7. Right. Yeah. I put calf strength. Maybe, maybe you are the man. Look <laughs> at uh, that. Is that our first uh, viewer from Chile? Oh, wow. Hello wow. from Chile. Hey, so, let's go. Welcome um, to the show. Yeah, welcome to the show. Right, so so let, me, let me read his notes okay, from yeah, let's, B. Let's, let's, so let's talk about these. Yeah, this is interesting. interesting. So the nose, so the B, the High West Whiskey Country American Single Malt. For everybody at home, when we did our tasting and our pre show our patron show we went through this and nosed them b's the one that stood out like in left field like you had these four whiskeys three of them over here and one was way the hell over there and that was b um b is the high west whiskey high country american single malt 90 dollars 44 percent abv the nose is so different from most scotches or malts initially it's like sticking my head into a grain bag of animal feed behind that i <laughs> yeah. get some toffee honeycomb and that's some the right yes yeah, animal feed perfect Taste is also fairly grain forward, like biting into some hipster 274 grain bread with some vanilla butterscotch and a bit of pepper at the finish. You should be a writer. You <laughs> should. <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty good. I had to include this one knowing no one had had it currently <clears throat> distillery only. And it's so completely different having the grain left in for, for, in for fermentation and distilling. Oh, that's so weird. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's why it, that's where it gets that yeah. real craziness out of it. Yeah. So. At the end of the day, I will say I didn't care for that one, but now that I've got some water on it, I actually am kind of liking it. I don't. Yeah, I think it's uh, there's too much grain in it. I think yeah. it's just, it's it's just got it's a so grain. it's different. Yeah, it's like it's, the whole. I probably wouldn't it. pour a shell on my shelf if I had it. It's just different. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So what did we end up? So A and C Justin? caught me. I was close to switching it and I didn't. Yep. All right, Justin. Uh, let's see here. Carry the one. Discussion of value wants to know if you want to write a blog article for it. Yes. Justin, you're writing a blog for Scotch in the Bayou. Yes, you need to. There you if, go. If she's supplying me with a few samples, I'll try to help her out. I'm sure that's <laughs> oh, a done deal. Uh, it's already in the mail. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm spelling something, Lee. Oh, there's a partnership. So, Sean, what would you pair B with? Hmm. Nothing. Pasta. Kick me in the jimmy. Maybe you're, maybe you're uh, those uh, rolls. I'd have to think about that one because I, you could. Honestly, I think that it would it would be good with like something that was very coating on your mouth. So like a rich demi glace or a cream sauce because it would kind of bring that grain influence down. Actually, it'd probably be really good with a pesto, like a pesto cream because you'd get the nutty mm. and and it would kind of yeah. complement the scotch a yeah. little bit. So. There yeah. you go. Some kind of a pesto cream. Maybe with seafood cool. just because I like, you know, maybe some, some clams or something like nice clam sauce with some pesto. What's the price point <laughs> on that Stranahan's? What was the Stranahan? That Stranahan's is only 55 bucks. Oh, yeah, what was the most bottle? expensive? What we missed the High West. Ah, that's what I said. Oh. Oh, I got it. I did too. No, wait. No, I got it wrong. Shoot. B, B's High West, right? I had, yeah. yeah, I had those. Yeah. We got them all. So you got in. So it obviously well. Sean or Drew probably won. I'm okay with that. Oh, I'm fine with it. Well, I don't I missed I don't, it. I don't know about the first round. I don't, yeah, I don't know, know either. either on that. All right. Drew one. Drew and Sean had two. Andrew had one. Mark had one. So we tied. We had two. Yeah. Time. Yep. So we tied. So we're good. I'm cool with that. So what was our final total score going from fourth to first? <clears throat> I, I'm still working on it. You guys need to give me a all right. Oh man! Come on, Excel genius. So, so, so the interesting thing. So, C was my number three, and that's the Glenmorangie Kenturman fourteen. And the thing about it is, it's really well put together. It just is fairly weak in relative to these other whiskeys we had here. And so that's where I kind of liked it. I almost put it as number two. Well, but we all like them be the best, though, which is the strain of hands. Right? So yeah. when I look at my rankings, I'm fine with my rankings yep. on this. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm good with all of it. Yeah. I'm what I what surprises me the most is the price point on that strain of hands. I I feel as good as it is it's five bucks is pretty damn good. I mean, we're we're ABV snobs. So I would I would have picked the strain of hands. Oh, I was all right. over the ABVs. I, that was the first thing I caught off the bat. A and C, I'm not disappointed that I flipped them because to be honest no. with you, listen. I wrote them down that way when you guys and I was flip flopping in my head. When you said what you said, I was gonna I was gonna go with it and say, "Yep." And for the show, I'm like, no, maybe not. Got to got to stick with this and keep it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some diversity here, just to, yeah. just just to argue it out. But um, 
they were, and I agree with Justin's comments. They really are very similar. Yeah. One just takes it to the next level. I mean, I had to taste them three times to right. figure out which one, because honestly, what I was tasting for was the lower ABV. Because I assumed that the Glimmerangi would, would, I mean, it comes at a lower ABV. Yeah. And so that's what I was tasting for. To interesting. Get to figure point. Out which one's one's a scotch. One's, you know, made here in America. Completely nice. different. Yeah, they're all, really, really they're really all cool. molds, but they're some blended, some, yeah. It was an awesome blind. Yeah, that was just really, really, really good. Very, much. very unique. So what, I got the scores if you want it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah we, we need some hazing. Bragging rights. <laughs> Drew and Sean both had six right. Andrew and Mark both had three. Oh, uh, dun, 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 dun. Why don't you guys doing dishes tonight? <laughs> you need to thumb wrestle for first place. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. hey, we're all winners. Oh, man, Thanks, cool. Justin. So we are all winners. Justin, hey, Justin. I'm going to toast a strand hands to you, brother. That's, my that's that's all I got left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Justin, wow. thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you sending us, man. man. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. God, that strand mm. smells delicious, mm. too. All right, guys. That was fun. That was really cool. That was fun. Ooh. All right. You know what, though? That Virginia is pretty good, too. I like the Virginia. Uh, they that were one. all very interesting, and I even got into the High West at the end. It like needed some water for me to get by the, the initial graininess of it. But Man, big-time curveball, though. Considering if you think he the only one of those was a scotch, and you know, that's what what that's our bread and butter, oh, right? So he it. threw yeah three outside balls getting us to swing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I love it. That's what makes it it's all right. Brilliant though, is you never know what you're gonna get. I, I, I feel pretty good when we do these blinds. Like I, I feel comfortable with them now and I try not to like I think a lot of people before if you've never done a blind like that before, you kind of get into your head about it and, and you get nervous. Like the first time you did one for uh, for Aquavite, oh you were God. so nervous when you, you were did that. freaking out. And I mean, now I'm just like, well, I mean, we really are going to let the whiskey tell us, you know, right. what it's got going right. on and, and we're going to call it like we see it. So what I thought was fun was, you know, it opened our eyes up to, to what American whiskeys can do. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there, there was some really good that's, American that's whiskeys. That's a beat of American lineup. innovation. Right. So really cool. Um, Drew is playing with our new lighting mm -hmm. system. They're dimming quickly. One's, yeah. Yeah. one's bright. One's, one's, not, half, one's not, not as charged as the other. So we may one, have to. One's not as charged as the other. That's, why, that's, why, that's why Mark's, or Mark's yeah. getting dark. We may have to go to the uh, tanning old ones, right? So let's switch gears. Right. We're out of blind, although I'm going to continue to drink my blinds. I am too. Um, let's do our podcast intro and then we'll start with this and go from there. Podcast right. intro. Right. It's three. The Monarch. Two. What's up, guys? Hey, guys, Hello. it is Scotch Four Dummies. Four guys on a Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. I am Drew. I'm Sean. I'm Mark. And I am Andrew. What a cool show tonight, Sean. Tonight, we are going to be discussing our review this week of Dewar's 15-year-old The Monarch. <laughs> the Monarch. In this beautiful gold tin box. And then we're going to get uh, into some pretty cool things about what is... I believe Dr. Scotch will be stopping by to have a yeah. discussion with us about uh, casks and aging and how all of that works. Um, I'm going to a quick pour of this uh, Dewar's because I don't remember it as well as I probably should. Yeah, I know that I scored this higher than the three of you. Um, and so I'm interested to get into it tonight and just to see how I feel about it this evening. But I enjoyed this class. Like, We're also going to get into an in-depth discussion on a two-part series that we got. So tonight's part one, right, guys? Part one. Yep. Um, and then next week will be part two. And let's go over the, the agenda of what we're going to cover in part one and part two so everybody knows what we're, what we're doing. Tonight, here. we are going to be talking about casks. So the wood that they're made out of and the size and shape of the casks and how that what influences that? The, yep. the maturation of whiskey. Yes. Next week... We're going to be discussing what was in those casks prior to their being scotch in it. Mm -hmm. So and, and 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 how that affects things. Yeah, and how first fill, second fill, third fill. What that means. Kind of yeah, yeah. What, and what what that. Why would you use refill? Why would you use first fill? Those kind of things. What you know, what you get from that. And then toasting and charring and yes. how that affects it. So yeah. all of that is going to be on next week's show. But tonight we're going to be discussing, and it's a really interesting in depth topic. There's a lot of history involved in cask making in cooperages, what they were used for initially, why they were used for it. Yep. Uh, I believe there's even a surface area discussion. 
There so, is. Uh, Dr. Scott uh, and, and honestly, there's Can a lot of awesome? innovation in this in that co topic, right? Mm -hmm. so if you think well, about and, it over and, the years. And, you know, the Scotch Whiskey Association allowed um, mezcal cast to come in to add. In the last year. Yeah, that, so that'll right. be more discussion on next, next week's episode. So, so anyway, back to the Monarch. Yeah, so let's talk about our review a little bit. Um, so do we remember when we ranked it? The, I like rated three, two, a five? three, uh, and you guys all rated it a two. So it was like a two, two, five. Two, two, five. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, this is a about $45 bottle. Mm -hmm. um, pretty common. I mean, it's doers. It's a blended whiskey. So you're looking at grain and malt. 15 year, though. It's got an age statement. It is. So let's be clear about that. Um, what, everyone asked at one point, you know, we didn't talk too much about the year. Uh, and how does it compare to other 15 year olds? I think the only thing we kind of really got into, honestly, is kind of the price about it. Yeah. I mean, when, what's the next price range for a 15 year old? I 70, mean, 80, right? 80, it's, it's at up least. There. So if you're if you're talking um, from a 15 year perspective price range, good luck finding anything that's going to beat this kind of uh, price right. range. Sure. So if I were to just compare it on age, 15 year olds. The first thing that's jumping in my mind, the first 15 that jumps in my mind is that Glenfiddich Solera. Yeah. Okay. Oof. And, and I mean, it's a good bottle, no, it, it, but, but, it's not $45. but it's not 45. No, it now not. on flavor. I mean, it's, I don't think it's fair competition. It no. doesn't stand to no. it. No. Nope. Um, but that Glenfiddich 15 Solera is all malt. There's no grain whiskey in there. Right. Um, it's not fun. It's so it, to me, it's not really a fair competition or com comparison, even though yep. it's a good question that everyone asks, you, you do need to address it, but I, I don't find I don't this, uh, you know, normally when you get into blended whiskeys, the, the first thing that I'm thinking is I'm going to taste the grain yep. yeah, and it's going to be predominant uh, unless we're drinking one of those older uh, expressions yes. like that bells. I don't get any of that grain. Right. right? Uh, but this one actually had, a lot more malt character up front. Um, it's got it's got nice sweet notes, oh, fruity and sugary um, and malty. And I just, I mean, it's a really enjoyable glass for me. We Ooh. did a review on Dimple Pinch. We should look that up. Good comment, uh, Alejandro. Andrew. Very good. Uh, so Dimple Pinch 15, he's saying around $15 yep. and um, a very underrated scotch. Yeah. And so Alejandro, can you go to our YouTube site and look up what our rankings were real quick on the dimple pinch because i might go oh, that. okay so mark can do that I, I, yeah i just want to um that's a fair we didn't talk through that yeah so i i rank this a three um i mean it's a nice glass for 45 bucks i'm not i'm not arguing with it i thought you gave uh, it a higher score but no i, I think i think we all did yeah too. well i'll try i'll you listen to the podcast sure. so yeah i listened to it when i was <laughs> when i was writing our patron post I, all right uh, so i'm gonna look at our ratings here Go ahead and look it up. Yeah, so it's a, so if you want to go to our Facebook, you can pull up all our old rankings and different bottles. Um, they're not Facebook, our website, and have that if if they're up. They're up. Um, so let's see. It's probably about page eight. Oh, yeah, I can't see it. We don't put them on there anymore. Nope. On Dimple Pink. All right. No, I got I, I got it. I'm, I'm close. I'm on. <laughs> DE. So Dimple Pinch 15. Andrew gave it a two. If I go sideways, maybe I can see the whole thing. So yes, Dimple Pinch. Andrew was a two, Drew was a two five, Mark was a two five, and Sean was a two five for a combined score of two point three eight. Almost the same. We so ranked it the almost same. the same. About the same. And this was in two thousand and eighteen. Yeah. For so a years ago. I, I like this too. So it's, it's it's pretty good. It's it's nice. Oh, what was that? Two point three. Yeah, Zach said the same thing. Yep. Um, I like. I, I think for for the price, it's, it's a nice. It's a nice ram. Dude, yeah. You can afford this bottle. You can share it. It's you're not going to be ashamed of sharing it. Honestly, yeah. if you're a budget conscious shopper and you're looking for <laughs> a bottle that's going to look nice on your bar, like yep. this is a nice looking bottle. Yep. Like the, the packaging is nice. The bottle looks nice. And you're looking for something that you can pour out huh. and not feel guilty about it. Well, the cool thing is you have something like a SMWS bottle next to it, you know, maybe a whatever price bottle. And then somebody comes in and says, hey, I'd like something out of the gold can. I'm like, <laughs> all right, go there right ahead. Go. That's a gold can for you. Pour your socks off. Yeah, yeah, you can pour up to the top. Go ahead. To be honest want. with you, though, I question the fact of how much would this bottle be if they didn't spend on this? I mean, I'm not saying go cheap and not, but that, I that, that's... I, I don't think that has much you to don't it think because so? the, no. what they're doing is they're pricing their bottles based on their core, the range. So it's going to be more expensive than the 12, sure. less expensive than the 18, 
And so we got to give yeah. a little bit more. But and let's also mention we did it on the review. How much doers goes out in the United States? Uh, like a more lot, than anyone. A lot. Like pretty much number one. It is number, number one. one we're, yeah. Number one scotch in America by volume. Oh. Um, you're going to find this in every bar. You're going to find it. At, well, maybe not doers 15. You're going to find doers, doers in every bar. You're, you're going to find what doers on every domestic flight. Yep. You're gonna, doers is, is going to be there. Um, and let's give credit where credit is due. They just kicked ass in the, the whiskey co yeah, competition recently, uh, like yeah. what, three weeks ago. Uh, Master Blender of the Year again. Uh, yeah. I can't think of her name off the top of my head, but she, I mean, that, I think that's two years in a row. She's, up in good yeah, things it's, it's good you know you can't discount mm -hmm. that right um it's a decent scotch for the price that's for sure agreed I, I think it's good yeah i like it too one thing i do want to sidetrack us for a second you mentioned the the can this there's, there's all kinds of different marketing going out you know we saw with you know game of thrones and we McCallan saw up there. Walker, McCallan, et cetera. did you see and maybe it might ruin the scotch in the news about the new johnny walker paper bottle bags? yes i saw it boy i didn't even want to talk about it. that just what the heck's going on? They got to do something, right? So they're making a, is that a carton? Essentially, it's, it is a. It's not a wax based, wax coated. No, but it's, it's, pr it's probably like a milk carton. That, well, that's wax coated. No, oh, those are dude. plastic coated. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, because I like to drink my scotch out of plastic, and I'm just saying, I Johnny, <laughs> come, oh, come on, man. man. <laughs> I, just Johnny Walker, oh, come on! Man. You guys are trying to. Uh, you guys are at the top of the mountain right now, and you're making decisions that are going to quickly put you in the valley. I think it's more of a political stunt or marketing stunt. I think you're else. right. It, it has it, nothing it, to do with. It is a green. Any initiative. kind of yes, it's well, nothing to do with making it's a green marketing. It it Same takes money. a lot of energy to ship a glass bottle across an ocean. So if you can ship a paper carton that weighs a fraction of that, <laughs> so that save yourself a lot of money. Uh, you know how much money you saved? Half sales. That's what you saved. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know what you didn't save? Tara. <laughs> I'm just yeah. telling you. I, I, I was even I listening uh, to, uh, to an interview a few months McLeod. ago where they were talking about uh, Stephanie seeing McLeod. if Thank they could you, ship, Thank you. ship the scotch to the countries where they were being consumed in bulk. And bottle it there. Oh, ship to ship save. Yeah, because they're shipping the bottles in from someplace else to fill up with scotch to ship back out to someplace else. Yeah, and it was just a, a, a awful lot of. I don't think the SWA let that happen. I think well, that's right. what they were talking about. But from a a conservation standpoint, it's a lot of energy to ship an empty bottle somewhere. You know what I mean? I don't know. I kind of feel like that time book. Boy, quote, you know, you can stick your head up a bull's ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, Doers the Monarch 15. Uh, Did you eat paint chips as a child? Uh, definitely. <laughs> worth, Why? Well, he grew up in the region, so, you know. I, I really think that it's worth going out and trying a bottle, and at 45 bucks, you can afford to do it. Yep. So, Absolutely. There you Absolutely, go. Yeah. That's where we'll leave it. And and there's plenty of doers in the uh, their core range. Yeah. So I, I guess so. I guess what it boils down to is 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 doers uh, typically has the, the lower shelf pricing going it on. Is. The 15 doers is reasonably nice. It's reasonably priced for a 15 year old. I think we all agreed that it's definitely a no brainer. Go buy yeah, it. That's an easy drink. Easy, easy sure. drinker. Sure. Yep. I don't. You know what? I don't think we talked about. I don't see the 15 monarch on the shelf everywhere no i don't i think it's it's, it's more rare yeah it's a little bit more hard to find but i you know if you run across it for 35 40 i mean it's not, it's not I, have to, I have to say though i'd probably buy monkey shoulder over it i really? think i would too so i i agree with you and I'll, I'll disagree right now and say you know what why i wouldn't is for variety i got a bottle of monkey shoulder on the bar um, and I think this is a nice, pleasant. So you pick this over the monkey shoulder right now, today? Sure. Okay. I got a bottle on a right monkey shoulder right now. So, um, and because I just want a little bit of variety. Someone comes over and they want to go through some scotches. I can give them a monkey shoulder, which <laughs> is a blended malt, and then I can give them a Doors 15, which has a little grain in it. See if they know the difference. See if we can a talk about. Grain. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. So <laughs> talking about someone that's know anything about scotch. So, 100% uh, pure mustard said, you know, Doors is number one. But so is Budweiser. Go to Europe. They drink Budweiser like it's going out of style. Well, it's an it's import. An import. <laughs> Budweiser is import. All right. Yeah. So I want to say hey to Keith. I see multi man caves on. Yeah, he, did, he doesn't there. like. He doesn't like doers. No. He doesn't like that. Okay, that's fine. So I, I would hey say entry level doers is better than entry level Jenny Walker. 
every day. White label over red? <laughs> over red. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't wash my toilet with red. I mean. No, exactly. <laughs> All right. Let's get you back on track. Back yeah. on track. All right. So our next topic tonight, should we bring Dr. Scotch in? Oh, that clicked is, something? Is he, that, Dr. Uh, Scotch what is did a, you cut? What? Wait a minute. Put the, uh, All right. Now, now we can hear it. Sorry. All right. Well, that, that was a, um, that was a All right. faux pas. We're gonna go should, we, should we bring Dr. Scotch in to talk about this? We're going to go into the next topic anyway. So yeah. let's see if we can talk to him. Go for it. My bad. Oh, look oh at this. what the heck? What's going on? <laughs> it's all behind. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> He's like, don't look at me. Don't, don't look, look at me. me. I'm naked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Perhaps we do a blind tasting. Oh, my gosh. gosh. Awesome. Anyway. It's awesome. <clears throat> Hang on. Here he comes. Hey, guys. What's going on? Dr. Scotch here. Yeah, there we go. Dr. 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 Scotch. Hey, Dr. Right. Scotch. We got we to gotta acknowledge Zach Andrews. Let's do this, for, let's do this first. We yeah, need yeah. to see him we're on the Patreon well. show. Hopefully, we see 21. him later, but definitely here hey, in spirit. It's open. Hey, Zach. Hey, Zach. Yeah, How are you doing, my friend? You missed a so heck welcome. of a blind. Man. Yes, we had a did. really good blind challenge. I was watching that in the in the wings here, and that's, yes. that was a good blind challenge. Yeah. yeah. So talk to us, Dr. Scotch. What's on your mind So I understand you guys want to talk about casks. We do. And the types of wood you're using and how, how you do that. So and what it means. What, what, I mean, yeah. Well, right, why, so why, I, why are we talking so about So I have become a, my patented, often duplicated, never, or often replicated, never duplicated whiteboard. You need to give Sweet. us an accent what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> and so what we got here, we're going to talk a little bit about casks. You need to put up there by Mark and Sean. Yeah. Well, I got a mark on an old. I, I, I may have to go, go in front. To work so now this. we can't see Dr. Scott. We can't see Dr. Scott we're all messing this up. Keep coming. Hi, guys. No. <laughs> okay, bad idea. So back, 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 back a little bit. So okay. um, what we've got here is a couple things. So number one, barrels. Um, talk to me. It's about all about this. the wood. Now, number one, let's talk about a barrel stave. So if you look at a barrel stave, this is a, this is a cross section of a barrel stave. And what you'll see are these lines running vertically through a barrel stave. Now they may be a little bit of an angle, or they may be directly straight, but these are the the grains of the or the the tree rings of the or the rings of the tree, you know the age age lines through it. Um, these are really important that they're in this orientation because that allows the whiskey to penetrate the wood. So stave is this way? Nope. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. So okay. so what you're saying is so what I'm saying is these lines when you blow them up into a larger scale, what you see here are the the age rings of the tree. This part here is the, you know, typically the, the white hard portion of an oak, a piece of oak. Nothing penetrates that. That's solid. It, it's impervious to water. It doesn't really have any, uh, have any impact. It's these, these little dark, dark rings here. These are full of those little, all the little uh, capillaries that pull all the water up the tree. And so what you have here is a little sponge. These, these dark uh, spots, uh, spots on, a, on a ring are, the, are a sponge. And this is where the, the whiskey penetrates through into that wood and, it, and is able to extract the material out. That's where so the magic happens. That's where the magic happens. So I know there's a, a whiskey that, um, that Andrew's fond of called the Star. And that, that is uh, unique because the barrels they use have mu many more rings per inch than other barrels. <laughs> so, so the more rings per inch, the more of these little sponges you have per stave. And so you get a lot more of that transmission of the wood flavor through the wood. Now the key is if you're a if you're a, um, a lumber guy trying to make these, how do you cut this log? You get this log, you cut this beautiful oak tree down. How do you cut this log to do that on every just graphic on every single thing you can do? All right, so I think I think Drew and I are gonna have to switch sides here because I got to draw. There's a graphic that Drew can pull up. Well, yeah, but right this is okay. a lot more fun. Okay. <laughs> so what we've got here is. Um, a log, and we want to. Oh, we lost the. You're fine. <laughs> so you guys can see it, but we can't. Um, you want to cut this so you have have this these striations running through every every stave. So what you do is what's called a quarter cut. Now a quarter cut is more expensive and more difficult to do on wood. Normally, if you put this through a lumber yard, you want to slice it like this, so it's like horizontally all the way across. Get great big wide boards. You're good to go. Very efficient. But what, what you do with with these, if you're using them for barrel, is you do quarter cut. So you cut the log straight down the center, cut the log straight down the center. Vertically and horizontally. Vertically and horizontally. So you've got a, a quarter, you've quartered the log. You can either cut it with a saw or you can split it depending on what you're doing. 
But then what you do is you start cutting your boards out of those. And so when you do that, then you start cutting vertically down, down like this. And, and, and the people on podcasts are a little more difficult to see. So you're cutting vertically and then you're cutting horizontally. And then you're cutting vertically, and you're cutting horizontally to quarter out those pieces. And what you'll see is those pieces all have these lines running through, like running this. across the grain, very much like the barrel. And that's the most efficient way to do it. It's more expensive, it's more difficult to do, but that's the only so way to you're, get You're maximizing the actual sponge effect. Exactly. You're trying to get those so, grains crossing, going across yeah. the board. So you're trying to maximize the number of capillaries in that stave exactly. running in so that yeah, so you, see, so you so, have to cut it that yes. way. Consequently, you can see a really good example of this in, in high-end furniture like tables and old Correct. tables where you see quartered oak and you get this almost tiger effect in the wood and that's why yes. it's so expensive because you're wasting actually a lot of wood i mean yeah so so for, is so not for efficient. fine um fine furniture there's a there's an alternate cut where you're always doing a radial cut so it's always you know right here when you get, get a little when bit you get more to out. the end when you get the end or when you do the radial cuts it's completely you have that grain cutting through every board and you know, whereas if you do normal lumber you cut them across but then you get a lot of these boards here down, down at the bottom where you get a lot of horizontal running and it, and it wouldn't make it staves. It's fine for lumber, um, but that's that's a different here. So but it's not going to get any penetration of no, the whiskey you into the You'll barrel. get no whiskey penetration. Before we get into your size, can we talk the quick difference between the American oak and a European oak? What do you, what's your, well, uh, the rings, the, the, how many, so uh, is there a difference between number of rings on an American oak and, and a European oak? I'm not aware an of An American that. oak grows a lot faster. Depends on where you grow it, but generally probably that's correct. And if it grows faster, you're going to have more rings. Is you that get, true? If it grows no. faster, you have fewer rings because it okay. will go thicker per year. Okay. So you have fewer rings per that's inch why going I asked. down the state. So, excellent. Now there are places, uh, you know that's one thing about the um, the Glenmorangia star is they take oak growing on the north side of a slope, so it gets less sun and the it, it grows less per year, and so you get more of that more of that kind of stuff. So that that's something to consider. Now I have one more graphic before I go. Um, I know you're going to get into the size of the barrel. Yep. So if you want to get all this flavor out of the barrel, you want as much of the liquid exposed to that barrel as you can. And so surface area or surface to volume ratio is really important for that. And what I've got here on the graphic on the bottom is different barrels. So I've got a 500 liter butt, uh, a, a 320 liter uh, punchin. Punchin. You have a 200, roughly 240 liter hogshead. You've got 200 liter American oak, and then you get a, a 125 liter quarter cask, or I'm sorry, that's American barrel. Um, so those are the this kind of a standard barrel. But what you have on, on the, the right here is um, the surface, vol surface to volume ratio. And what you're, the higher the surface area to volume ratio, the more flavor you're gonna get out of that barrel faster. Because you're exposing more of the liquid to, to the wood. barrel. Exactly, the, the wood has more inner, intimate contact with that, uh, with the, li the liquid and the wood have, have good contact. So if you're looking at a quarter cask, you have a relative surface area ratio of 1.3. So that, you know, quarter casks, I know Lafroy used quarter casks, a lot of good wood influence in that whiskey, and they've got good surface area. If you use a, a, a full butt, a 500 liter butt, that is down at 0 0.7 relative to... So you're you getting know, half of the exposure. Exactly. So, so in that case, you are going to expect less wood influence, but you can age longer in that cask without over-oaking it. Right. So there's advantages and disadvantages. If you want a quick... You know, a finishing, you would do a quarter cask, you do something really small, you do because that, that way you get that wood so it's quick. But if you want to eat, if you want a 25 year old whiskey, you better not put it in a quarter cask. But it'll... more flavoring, the smaller you go. And so, more flavoring, smaller barrel. Right. So let's talk about that. These big guys, these 500s, these butts, yeah. and these port pipes that yes. are just the same, similar size, what do they normally put in those? They put sherry, sherry. and port, yeah. right? And what do they want out of those? No um, wood influence. That's true. Right. That's why they put them in huge barrels because the surface ratio is so low. Exactly. And that's why they like to finish in those to get those influences, but they got to create a crap load of bottles because right. of it. Exactly. Yeah, they and they can sit in there for a long time. Long yeah. time. So you could put 12, 15, 25 year uh, in a in a uh, port pipe 
and not really care because it's not gonna it's not gonna over oak. No, but you're so gonna I would think dollars. I would think that you are you're you're equating definitely your aging in here too to figure out year wise too because if you want to the quicker like if you're a newer distillery, you know you're probably looking at some yes. of the smaller casts to, to help produce faster tastes. Yes, that that's the ideal. So if, if you're if you're a young distillery and you need to sell some whiskey to make some money, you put them in a small barrel, you get them out of three years, and it may not be great. But it's going to be much better than you put it in a butt and waited three years. <laughs> Correct. You're not going to have because the butt's going to uh, force you to wait longer. It is. I whiskey mystery. Yes. If you want, if you're intended to get a thirty year whiskey, you better put it in a butt because otherwise you're going to overoak. That's very interesting. So good stuff. I, I'm actually glad you chose to draw this as opposed to put the graphic up because I have a better understanding of what oak is. Agreed. Means. And this is really cool. I had no idea that the actual wood portion is impervious. That's why you make. It's, boats out of that it's essentially impervious i mean it does so it does it's so sure, essentially sure. it goes into that sponge and then it'll, it'll permeate a little bit into that but that's but that's not, not cre that's but, not creating the flavor that's, that's not creating the, it, the, the the whiskey or the sherry or whatever you're trying to get into what doesn't get into the wood without these rinds run that way correct now next week i can talk about the the charring you have that layer of of, of uh charring on top now you've got a carbon filter but that's for next week Cool, man. <laughs> Dr. Scotch, you're the man, Dr. dude. Dr. Scotch. Drink to that guy. All right. We appreciate you. Talk to you later, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at this. Maybe. Oh, maybe. Oh. They call me Dr. Scotch. Oh, my God. Hey, guys. Is me. Dr. Scotch here? What? <laughs> he was. Alejandro oh, says, does the shape now. of the barrel also affect the surface? Yes, to it does. And, ratio? And Absolutely. That's an interesting question because that's the conversation. I was, I was intrigued. So I, I was reading up on all these different cask sizes and shapes, and there's a ton. Like, I mean, it's when you're reading about casks, it's the history of shipping yeah. liquids from one country to another. Yeah. That's you know what point. I mean? That's the point. And there are different sizes based on what they're shipping. Just like you were just talking about the sherry and the port. Like they didn't want a whole lot of barrel influence. They just wanted to ship it from one yeah. place to another. And so it's big barrels. So you get very little influence and they're getting it from point A to point B. And then they're dumping all that liquid out into bottles or whatever you're putting it in. And then they've got this big barrel that they don't have anything to do with. And the Scots are like, well, you know what we could do? We could dump our whiskey in there. So I don't need to go buy a barrel, exactly. which is, you know, frugal and yep. useful and you get better whiskey out of it. So why wouldn't you want to do it that way? Unfortunately on that topic though, as technology comes around, they come around with these stainless steel shipping containers and stuff. And the sherry bodegas aren't coming off of their old casks because well, they don't want wood influence. There are sherry bodegas that are using 300 year old casks to mature their, the, their wine in because they're not giving that up. The sherry and the port, you know, the, the things that they're actually aging them in at the bodega are not what they were shipping them in. Right. So that it's two different things. And so, you know, they would get the sherry ready. They would put it in a barrel. The barrels only function as transport. I mean, literally, it's yep. it's not really there for anything else. So they're filling it up. They're putting it on a ship, sailing across the channel, gets right. to England. They offload it. They dump the liquid out, and then they've got this barrel. So I was intrigued at the fact that port pipes and sherry butts are, are very similar in size, but they're different shapes. They are. So the port pipes are actually... Taller, longer, thinner, narrower, narrower, narrower yeah. barrels, but they hold roughly the same amount of of liquid. Um, and so I was wondering, you know, I'm I'm that's thinking that that has more to more surface area, right? And so that's an interesting. I, I mean, port's a bigger, bolder wine, so it can probably hold up to that a little bit better. I, I don't know if there's a historical. Uh, I didn't have time to really look it up to see why historically that would have been the shape that they went with. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's probably a reason for it. And it may be, you know, something that we need to get a Cooper on to talk about the shape of the barrel and why they did it that way. Um, <laughs> so if you look at some of the comments, so DeSelf says he he's a big butt man. <laughs> there's a lot of those comments up, up above. Yeah. Well, Drew, you've actually got some, some things that you can pull up uh, from, from websites that we can uh, about sizes. Yep. At least let's talk about size. So there's two yep. things we want to talk about in this conversation. It was the size and was it and the, the type of wood and the type of wood. Yes. Right. Yep. So let's, let's,
back up, and I think type of wood is a shorter conversation. Yeah, yeah it is. So I let's mean, get that out of so the way. So the most common barrel that you're going to see is the yeah, American sure. bourbon barrel. American bourbon barrel. Because that right. barrel Can you zoom in? In, the, yeah. in the bourbon industry, you can only use that barrel once. One okay? time, man. It's and a one-time shot. Right? right. So once they're done aging, whatever bourbon has gone in that barrel for however long it's going to sit in there, that barrel can't be reused for bourbon. It can be reused for a lot of other things, but bourbon isn't one of them. Yep. So is one. they send a lot of those across the pond and they get used either as a bourbon barrel or as a hogshead, which is a redone barrel with those staves that's slightly larger. Right. We'll right? get into that in a minute um, when we talk about the size and but, shape. So the bourbon barrel... Uh, you know, it's what 200 liters, so yep. 53, 52, 52 gallons. gallons yeah. uh, but, so uh, it's a it's a decent sized barrel, but it's manageable. But it's American oak. It's American um, oak. American oak, and so that's it because of the American oak and what came in there before, which we'll talk about next week. But you get a lot of vanillas and and uh, you know it's the caramels, and, caramels and things yeah. like that mm -hmm. versus the European oak, where you're going to get a more spicy. Right. Finish. So one of the things that I read about in, in researching the, the casks um, with those two different types of oak is that the American oak grows faster. It does. And, and I mean, to the point where they can harvest an American oak tree where they, um, at a point in time where they might have to let an American oak tree grow another 70 to 100 years before they get the same yield. I mean, European oak. Oak. Yeah, I mean uh, yeah, European oak. I mean, so, much faster. I mean yeah. That, that's crazy. That crazy. So that is what focused, that's what kind of turned the industry to looking more at the American oak. And now where are we, right? It, it, it's a marriage because like you said, the bourbon we'll industry. Yeah. And, yeah. But it's, it's also, it's not just about a growth thing. It's about a flavor thing. And, and we know that over the last five years, we've come to learn that we know what the difference between a European or Spanish, you know, Spanish right. European oak uh, compared to, an American oak. And if we want to stretch this even further, a Japanese oak, which is completely oh, and utterly yet another beast, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so that's the type, right? Those are the, really the only two that we're going to get, Those right? Yeah. Two types you're not making them. oak, you're not making barrels out of any other wood, are you, Andrew? Not for whiskey. Definitely not for scotch. Um, other whiskeys can allow, you can try, you know, do some peach, peach wood. wood or whatever. <laughs> But for the most part, a lot of many of them are too porous. I mean, you're you're talking about yeah, you're, a lot you're of leaking. <laughs> a, a lot of wood isn't suitable for containing liquid, right? And or it, it gives you an off flavor. Boys, well, we got some so, super chats here. Uh oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, uh oh, what's going on here in the background? Richie Z. Okay, As Richie always, Z. Thank much. you very much. Cheers, man. Thank you. Cheers. And we got one more. And Bob Johnson, Bob Johnson, who owes his Scotch journey to Scotch for Dummies. Damn mm. right, man. Well, cheers, Bob, man. Thank awesome. you very much. Bob, I got to tell glad. you, that is music to our ears. So glad you're on the journey with us because it mean, is a journey. We're still on the journey. journey. <laughs> we're still on a journey. I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. We I decided hope, to go on the journey and just start filming it. So. Yeah, I hope <laughs> you're making friends in the chat because, honestly, there are a ton of great whiskey drinkers in this chat that, that can teach us all something and we're learning as much as sharing yeah. and join right. our discord channel because there's even more discussions that's going true on there. yeah Tell way more than what we can do so yep um so i think that wood influence i mean there's there's only a few types that you're generally going to see to me the size of the cask is extremely important it's it's um uh, because we've had and we even got into some casts that i was like i've never seen one of those a uh, what was the, the blood, the blood tub? tub? Yeah, it's like a 60 liter cask. It's small. I don't know why they call it a blood tub. I'm sure there's I'm a medieval no. reason for it. I'm afraid to know <laughs> why you call you that call a blood tub. Pig and a sheep. Go, <laughs> take this blood tub and catch the head when they yeah, get it off. The blood tub is <laughs> blood tub holds a typical <laughs> quantity from a cow when you slaughter it. I don't know if that's the right or not, but so anyway. Um, so the size is important now. The key next week is what's in it. So when you get to a, a, a cask that has a significant amount of influence from the previous liquid, it almost doesn't matter how big it is because that coating or the amount of liquid that's left in there is going to influence the flavor so much more than, than, than the wood, than the wood will. So if you go 200 liter or 500 liter, it's much more efficient to put in a 500 liter cask rather than have two and a half smaller casks. 
So I want to stop you right there. Mm -hmm. And I want you to translate that for everybody at home into consumer speak, because that's a really important point, folks, especially when you're researching a bottle on the shelf or researching a bottle from something like the SMWS. Go and back you, to that picture of the cask. And you see that this. tells you everything. You see this initial cask and you see final cask yes. and you're like, okay, really this should that. be good. Oh, can't. You know what? Oh, okay. it, you need to understand what Andrew just said about it's not just about the size. The size has something to do about it, but it's also about what was in it before and how many times was it in it before? Yes, that's the before key, it, you, you start yeah. thinking about these things and you're like, it changes. If you don't know that, you're really kind of taking best guesses. Where if you do understand that, you can make some really wise purchases off the shelf by reading what's where where, where it's been, what it's been in. Yeah. Yeah. And so what <laughs> so Drew's trying to bring up a, a slide here of this. Yeah, that's it. Of, Cast of, in a row. Four different casks. No, it's not it. <laughs> that's why I I got too many tabs so he's falling apart so I, i'm a manufacturer i got i gotta take a million with liters of whiskey nope. a year nope up <laughs> no nope. that one no cask in a row that one it's yeah. a picture that's yeah that's what you did no it's not oh, there, there it is <laughs> all right so what you'll see here is a bourbon barrel 200 liters all the way to the left is a is a sherry butt 500 liters so i can either put my liquid in one sherry butt or two and a half bourbon barrels. Which do you think is gonna be easier to store and handle? So handling, admittedly, the share butt's gonna be really, really heavy. So you're talking- But I'm burly and pounds. my employer pays me it's, in it's, it's a thousand pounds to move that sherry butt. And it's gonna sit there though for 20 years. But so you're, 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 yeah, you're, you're looking for longevity here and you're talking about getting a lot of flavors. Well, and, and, and a long- Just the, the number, sherry, the number sherry of- influence if, yeah, if, it, if it's coated in sherry, then you're getting all the liquid from the sherry. There may be even like liters of sherry left in that barrel. So, so efficiency wise, I want to use sherry butts as much as possible because I have to, I need fewer of them and the volume to surface area ratio. Yeah, you got that. But, but you're, you're, but you're looking this. for a certain flavor profile with that. Exactly. So that's the efficiency. Now, again, 500 liter of barreled spirit you know, that's at 60% ABV, give or take. Now I dilute that down to 40%. That's a lot of bottles of whiskey out mm -hmm. of that one butt. True. Right. True. So, you know, if you're cheap and you want to only make, uh, only create volume, but well, you want flavor. I, I don't know that it's necessarily a cheap thing. It's an efficiency thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, a whiskey distillery is a business. It is. You know, they've got to maximize space. They've got to maximize their employees time. They've got to maximize, you know, so what they're getting out of that as far as product goes. Mm -hmm. and, but it's, it's actually more, it's also cost of the casks where you're sourcing. your Justin, casks for, same question. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, Justin. I don't know the price. Oh, right. So a, a lot comes into that. So if you want to take it to the next <laughs> part of the conversation though, and, and the size and stuff, let's talk about, the difference uh and we were that's tonight's conversation mm -hmm. i want to mix part one and yep. part two because there's there's yep. a lot to talk about you guys and it's hard not to blend the two together but it is we've already gone into the fact that american oak the the american standard barrel the asb that's kind of where it all starts mm -hmm. that that's the guy right we know what the size of that is you can pull that graphic up that's got the how much they hold right so we've got this american standard barrel and all bourbons going into this thing one time what do we do after at one time happened. well the scotch yeah this is great the scotch industry is like shit, we'll buy those barrels cheap. so and we'll buy them cheap because you know you got well, a million of them I, I can tell you as a as a consumer an aftermarket consumer when i bought the barrels that you're sitting on yeah sitting, so it was 90 bucks a barrel there you go delivered 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 here right now let, let's be realistic folks the romantic what you envision how these things are purchased is not how it goes. No, no. A, a distillery buys a bunch of used bourbon barrels from, from America. They're deconstructed and shipped over in staves. Okay. So it's not like they're shipping over barrels. That's totally it's inefficient. A, it's, a, yeah. it's very, I mean, it's a lot of wasted space. Right? <laughs> so they break them down, they ship them over. And once they get there, what do they do with these staves, Andrew? They don't turn, they don't just rebuild them into nope. a American standard barrels. Nope. They take these staves and it, it blows my mind that they figured this out because it's it's a they they actually know 
how big they could make it before it started leaking. And that's where they stopped. And when they stopped, they called it hogshead. Hogshead. Right. <laughs> yep. So you take you, you take the staves of what 1.2 or something barrels and you just take a bigger ring, you put them all together and you you just exp you don't exp you don't make it any longer. You just make it a larger diameter. Right. You add more right. staves to it. And so now, how much more does it hold? Pull that graphite like, back it, up. It holds 25 percent more and maybe it's 10% more staves. Yeah, the interesting thing is, is if you really look at the shape of a stave from an American standard barrel, I wish you guys could see these benches that were, uh, these seats were sitting on. Sean made them out of, of barrels. You know, the, the stave actually has a little bit of a, of an angle built into it. You know, when you look at five degrees, or something? if you look at our bottle hangers that we sell on our website, we those are literally cross sections of a bourbon stave, an American standard That's barrel true. right there. So you can see this little bit of an angle on the sides. Well, the yeah. They, these, this little angle on the sides. That's a stave. It's, they fit perfect in an American standard barrel. Well, when they get over to Scotland, they actually build it out a little bit bigger. These angles don't fit perfect. So just the ends of them are, are, are biting up. And they figured out that if you go too big, it'll start leaking. But if you keep it at the right, you know, so they were able you can to make them bend just a little just bit, a wee bit, right? You know, and so it just amazes me that they've done that. And now they're getting, you said, 25% more yield yeah. out of it, right? Which is smart. And, and very yeah. smart. And well, it's, it's a double cost effective. So it's a, it's a hybrid in a sense. It is. it is. Yeah, it really is. But it's, I think the American standard barrel is, it, it sets sort of a baseline. That's kind of where it all starts for yep. the vast majority of them. Then now, don't get me wrong. I know we've got our port pipes. We've got our sherry butts. We've got our quarter casks. Um, those are all different, but um, there's so much in the American standard barrel. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's where, I mean, a lot of the aging is in the American standard barrel. Right? Yes. And then they're transferring to, to something else. It's probably a more expensive barrel for finishing. Finishing, yes. Right. So when it comes to Scotch maturation, there is. We'll talk more on part two next week. But this is just the beginning decision making. Yeah. Man, this is just the wood and the bear and, and the well, and the shape of the barrel. And, the size and a lot of, the barrel, of this really. is the quantity, the volume. What right. are you trying to if, do? If you are a distillery, you may be locked into contracts with different producers that are you know i mean i've seen stuff that said you know we're locked in with this company for the next hundred years wow you know there are sherry cast producer That's for a hundred right years and so i mean you get some of that where you know this contract was signed by my grandfather you know i that's where we get our barrels from yeah until well, you know 2047 the right. contract's up and then we can talk <laughs> again you know yeah, but so, it also depends on i think uh Zahn said about about your your environment. What what's the readily availability of certain Clim barrels? Climate, climate. Part yeah, for sure. sure. And, and, and he price. I mean, there. so you you may go into something saying, How, "What do we have back here? What can we put together? Yeah. What can we import right now? Yeah. What can we get?" And those are all decision well, making. And Scotch on the Bayou pointed out that Spain doesn't ship in bulk barrels anymore, no. and hasn't for a while. No, you know the barrels that they're aging. You know, sherry casks in like those casks are produced <laughs> for the scotch industry yeah, it's they're, a they're, product unto itself yeah. right they yeah. create a barrel they put sherry right. in it to they, they let it. it sit to soak the sherry into the wood and, and then let's they be honest that's not the sherry they're bottling no. for the table no and they're about they're, they're using it. it gets used it gets distilled down into something else or whatever but it's it's not it's it's sherry. main its main purpose is to season the barrel with right. that flavor and right. they ship the barrel to Scotland. Yep. Right. So yep. there's a there's a lot that goes into that barrel before it ever gets to, you know, I mean, they've got to cut those trees down, dry that wood for years before they can turn it into staves. Right. And so it's a minimum, minimum six months in open air before they can use it for barrels. Some of them will, will kill them. You know, heat them and dry them. But I mean, but that's, then they still need to stay outside for six months. Yep. Before right. They use and then it if has it's, to an, if it's an American standard barrel, you're talking about aging that stuff for several years with bourbon in it before they can dump that bourbon out yeah. and ship it across the ocean right. for it to end up in Scotch. So, I mean, you're talking five, six years from yeah. the time they cut that tree down yep. until it ends up in Scotland Correct. with Scotch. But at minimum. Yeah. So when when yeah, could you pull that one graphic up as a chart 
Drew. Which one? So it was. It's uh, it's basically yes, right there. That this is this one. So here. when we yeah, when cask we pull maturation. this thing up, we're talking about maturing through through a cask. There's there's a few terms that are used that I actually learned in researching this. Um, and interesting stuff. So there's three different types of maturation. There's one called a sub subtractive uh, maturation, an additive, and an interactive. And what you see is the red line is the subtractive, where basically the oak ma maturing in the oak barrel is pulling away the distillery characteristic the bad, or the, the bad stuff. The, yeah, it's it's pulling out that distillate, that bad flavoring of distillate. If you've ever had white lightning right off of the still, it you'll know anything like the right. whiskey. That it, that's what that first, that's what they call subtractive maturation. It's pulling that off. Then at a certain point in time, you start having called what's called an additive maturation where now the wood is influencing the flavor. It's starting to add character and flavor to it, whether it's been sherry seasoned or whatever, it's oh. starting to put back into it. And the point is that the, what they want to find is an interactive maturation where you've got a combination of the distillate and the, the wood. Yep. And then you've get this, you get, that's when, that's when a guy uh, or a master blender or distiller manager wants to pull it that now that's where my, my sweet spot is. So that it's, it's interesting to see how this works. And when you talk about that subtractive maturation and that additive maturation, you need to start looking into the charring and we'll talk about that next yep. week. Like you yeah. said, because talking about subtractive, that char it's is a important. filter. It's a huge <laughs> it's a filter, carbon right? Filter. Exactly. Yeah. And it's hard to imagine when, you know, I see, you say filter, I see my, my, you know, furnace filter, but charcoal, how can that be a filter? What, What's that do? How does that filter something? Pull organics out. We'll talk I about. Want, yeah, I want Dr. Scott mm. said, just hate me on that. Hey, KB. KB. Cheers, brother. Cheers. What's too that bad guy? that guy's Mr. Right. Fisherman. Yep. And, and too bad he doesn't have a picture. I mean, nobody's ever taken a picture of this guy. Um, I'm out. So I think that was a very good initial kickoff yep. of our talk about casks. There's a ton of information. Like all of this stuff directly influences what do you think 40 percent of the flavor that you end up oh my in, gosh minimum, minimum. yeah 40 so, to 70 you know the decisions that they're making about you know where they're sourcing these casks from how big the casks are how long they're leaving this whiskey in the cask directly affects in a significant way what you end up with as a consumer at the end product. Absolutely. That, that's why you know at a distillery you got a master blender and then right under them is a master of wood because Sourcing that because again, you've got to you've got to put your your money up multiple years before you actually get that barrel because right. you got to you got to put your put your chit in to get right. Ahead. I do want to say and give a shout out to whiskey.com. Um, I always yep. whatever his name is. He, he he's the one that puts horse horse yeah yeah, yeah put, horse. it's his site. We use some of the images for. He does a great job, he's really in depth analogy. If you want more information on this, you should go to his site whiskey.com. Yeah, yeah, he is. He really did a very thorough job of talking about wood and casks. Yep. Um, and there's a ton of information. Right. Yep. Um, but in, in all honesty, 40%, I think is undershooting it. Yeah, I, it probably, I, it's probably yeah, 50 it's to agree. 60%. Yeah. You guys, if, if you want to know what's going to influence your whiskey, it's that barrel and what was in it before and how it was charred or toasted. And we'll get into all that good stuff next week. So <laughs> tune in next week. We've got a really be fun, a, a full show lined up for next week as well. So, yeah. all right. Guys, guys, good show tonight. Yeah. Have fun. Thank you, KB, for the, the super chat. Super thank chat. Thanks, Thanks, everybody, everybody for joining. Us. Justin, thank you so much for the blind. That was really fun earlier. Um, that was very interesting. And yeah. It was a challenge. It, it was. I think it put us up uh, against the road. Yeah, it was a good yep. time. If you want to talk to us between now and next Thursday, Discord's the way to do it. Bingo. All right, guys. So, yep. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching, guys. I love y'all. We'll see you.